A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went to Zarephath of Sidon to the house of a widow. The son of the mistress of the house fell sick, and his sickness grew more severe until he stopped breathing. So she said to Elijah, Why have you done this to me, O man of God? Have you come to me to call attention to my guilt and to kill my son? Elijah said to her, Give me your son. Taking him from her lap, he carried the son to the upper room where he was staying and put him on his bed. Elijah called out to the Lord, O Lord my God, will you afflict even the widow with whom I'm staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself out upon the child three times and called out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let the life breath return to the body of this child. The Lord heard the prayer of Elijah. The life breath returned to the child's body, and he revived. Taking the child, Elijah brought him down into the house from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Elijah said to her, See, your son is alive. The woman replied to Elijah, Now indeed I know that you are a man of God. The word of the Lord comes truly from your mouth. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin, for I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the Church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it, and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when God who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went into Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other of the apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord.
These readings today are for people who have bottomed out, who have hit bottom and think there's no hope. Here's the message. The God of the Bible creates the whole universe out of nothing. And this is incomparably good news, spiritually, psychologically, physically. God can make something out of nothing. That means that even when you move into that space of nothing, when you hit rock bottom, when you're completely lost, don't give up. Because God can create something out of nothing. Okay, so that's the principle. Let's read, rethink these readings with this in mind. The first reading today comes from the 17th chapter of the first book of Kings. If you haven't read through the Bible lately, pick up 1 Kings. It's a very lively book, very interesting book. In the 17th chapter, we meet the prophet Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. What was the situation like at that time? It was an extreme drought, a famine in Israel, and Elijah the prophet was desperate. So God gives him instruction and invites him to trust. Remember, this is the God who can make something out of nothing. The Lord sends him to the most unlikely of places, outside of the country, to Zarephath to a widow in a small town. Now remember back then, for a, a widow in that time and place, they were practically helpless. You lost your husband, you, lo you lost your, your means of support. So during a time of drought, to a foreign country, to a helpless woman, that's where God sends him. And when he finds the widow, he says, give me something to eat. He's desperate. He's dying. He, he's been on this journey. And she says, look, I only have enough food for myself and for my son for one more meal. After that, we are going to die. She's caught in the famine too. Elijah must have thought, what in the world I have been sent to this person to help me survive? But then we come across this beautiful hinge to the whole story. Each of them trusts. First of all, Elijah does trust that God has in fact sent him to the right person. And she trusts. She makes food for him, not for herself, not for her son. And then we hear very beautifully that for the next year the flour and oil do not run out. They will have enough food during this time of famine. So both the prophet and the widow are in dire straits. They both have extreme need, and they get what they needed. Trust in the Lord, who can create something out of nothing. Now, the story goes on, and that's actually where this first reading kicks in. Elijah is staying with this widow and son, but as we hear, the son becomes deathly ill, and then he finally dies. He's the only hope that this widow woman has for someone to care for her, to support her. And in her despair, she lashes out at the prophet. She's angry, as a lot of people who are in dire straits find themselves angry at God. And once again, she's hitting bottom, and the prophet once again asks her to trust. He says, Give me your son. Her son has just died. He says, let me take him. From her lap, he takes him to the upper room where he starts to pray and he stretched himself out upon the child three times, calls upon the Lord, as the reading says, and the young man comes back to life. Once again, an absolutely hopeless situation, because of God's grace, because of God's intervention, it becomes a place of joy, of life. Not only does the young man come back to life, which is good itself, but the woman now has someone to care for her, to support her, and what else did we hear? She regained her faith. 
her faith in the God who can bring something out of nothing. Now, the Gospel reading obviously mirrors this first reading in many different respects. Jesus happens upon this funeral scene of a young man, the only son of a widow woman. She now has nothing. Jesus knows the desperate situation that she is in. And with a simple command, Jesus brings the child back to life which awakens not only hope in the woman, but also this great sense of faith uh, all the people who are around there. They say, a great prophet has arisen among us. God has looked favorably upon his people. What have they sensed here? That God can still create something out of nothing. And we have the same pattern in the second reading. Paul tells the Galatians how it was that he comes to the Christian faith. It wasn't through studies. It wasn't through the witness of good people. But through sheer grace given to the least likely person. And that's Paul's point here. Paul was not just opposed to Christianity. He didn't just argue with it, criticize it, ignore it. He actively, violently, brutally persecuted it, breathing murderous thoughts, as it says in the Acts of the Apostles. He presides over the stoning of St. Stephen. Paul's there when the first Christian dies. He was as far from the Christian faith as you could possibly get. He was spiritually dead. But now Christ brings him to life. God created Paul's Christian faith from nothing, from less than nothing, you might say, turning a violent persecutor into an ardent champion of the faith. Here's the application for us. Don't give up hope, even when you are in desperate straits. Don't surrender when things seem utterly void of hope and meaning. You're on your last leg, you've got nothing left in the tank, you're actively moving in the wrong direction, nothing is going your way, don't give up. Because God can bring you back to life again. And there's someone listening to me right now, and maybe you're tempted to say, okay, that's it, no more hope, that's it. Cry out today, asking for God's grace, because we have a God who can create something from nothing. As we heard in the Collect, the opening prayer of the Mass, O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may receive what we need. There are also people not here at this Mass listening to this message, thinking themselves somehow unworthy to be here, looking to make sense of things in their life outside of the context of faith. Maybe they're in dire straits. They're really angry at God right now. Well, this is precisely the place they need to be. Even in the darkest of hours, God can create something from nothing and bring grace back into our lives. So may we trust. May we trust O oh God, grant that we who call upon you in our need, grant that we may receive exactly what we need. Amen.